They are cordial, and we're sorry for keeping you waiting, met and unanimously backed the proposition that Martin McGuinness be nominated as a candidate in the presidential election. And Martin will uh, spend Monday at the uh, assembly. He's been in touch with the Concordia there, Willie Hay, and will uh, clear his desk and do what needs to be done in terms of all of that. But he will be uh, nominating John O'Dowd to replace him temporarily as the in the office of First and Deputy First Minister. I've known Martin McGuinness for 40 years, and he's a friend, and his wife Bernie, and their children have grown up with my family, and he embodies everything that is needed in a political leader. He's a deep love for Ireland, and more importantly, for our people, and he has a vision of where we as a people and a nation, a country, need to go. He would truly be a president for all Ireland and all Irish people, wherever they are. He has the respect of unionists and he commands, not just here in Ireland and even people who might not disagree or who, who might not agree with either Martin or with Sinn Féin, hold him in, quite rightly in great respect. And that is also the case throughout the diaspora. Wherever Irish people and people of other nations are, Martin McGuinness is a figure <coughs> who they look to for leadership. As he embarks on this presidential campaign, he will not do so as a Sinn Féin candidate, but very much as part of a broader campaign. And I'm confident that people will rally uh, to this flag in the course of the next months, we have been inundated with uh, calls for people who are excited by this prospect, people who are telling us that they're not members or they've never voted for Sinn Féin, but they want to be part of this campaign. And I would appeal to them to find a space. This is a step change in the need to revive our fortunes as a people. And I think Mary Robinson in her time and our President Mary McAleese have redefined the office of president. They've made it increasingly relevant. They've woven it into the fabric of our nation right across the entire island. And the next president will have to give leadership in one of the most difficult points in our history, because we are a people in transition. We're in transition in the north as a result of the peace process, and we're in transition here in this state as a result of the huge distress visited upon people in the course of the last number of years. We need a people's president. And Martin has been central to the peace process, has been central to fighting for people's rights, he's been central to the search for national reconciliation, and this election provides him a national platform to continue this work. He's committed to building a new republic, and that has to be based upon the unity of Catholic Protestant and the centre. And I think at any time leaders do need to set good example and in these difficult times, for example, Martin will set an example by drawing only the average wage. So there are many challenges ahead but I believe that Martin McGuinness is the best candidate in the field and that his broad vision of a new republic is one which will resonate with many across Ireland and throughout the diaspora. So I want, therefore, to ask Martin to step forward and say a few words, and then we're open to questions. Well, Gurmagat, Gurid, Jeev, Galair, Ta Falcharov. Uh, when I first uh, set out on my political journey on the streets of uh, Derry City over 
40 years ago. Little did I ever think that I would end up here, standing before all of you in our capital city, about to embark on a campaign to be elected uh, by the Irish people as their president. I gave this issue uh, an awful lot of uh, consideration, and particularly so in recent days when in the United States with Peter Robinson on an important trade mission. So I've reflected long and hard about the ups and downs throughout those 40 years and more. The great heights of the peace process, the intense negotiations, the achievement of political agreements and the establishment of all Ireland and power sharing institutions, and the many lows which saw over two decades of violent conflict, of the squandering of the wealth of the Celtic Tiger, and the scandal of the many of our brightest and best young people being driven to every corner of the globe in search of work. So I feel uh, very humble at being selected, and I pledge to bring everything that I have to this campaign over the next number of weeks. This election needs to be about a new beginning. I do new beginnings. It needs to be about the future of the Irish people. And throughout my involvement in political life, all I have ever wanted to do was to make a contribution, to make a difference, to empower people and to unite them. I have never sought financial gain or privilege from my involvement in politics, and I never will. I still live in the same community where I was born and raised. And if elected President of Ireland, I will draw the average wage and donate the vast bulk of the presidential wage to the Irish people. I think that's only but right. We've been through a period of greed and selfishness, and I think this presents an opportunity for people who are elected at the highest level to show the people of Ireland that they are prepared to share in the pain and sacrifices and hurt that they have endured. So I feel a very deep bond with ordinary working people. And as I have travelled around the South in recent years, I have felt the anger at the impact of the reckless economic policies pursued by the rich and the powerful, which have impacted on ordinary citizens. I believe as political leaders we have to offer something better. We have to offer hope, and we have to offer a better future for the people of Ireland. In short, we have to lead by example. When the Hugh Adams talks first began in the 1980s, people could see no way out of what seemed to be an intractable conflict. We had a different vision. Even when we were told it was pointless or that it could never work, we kept going and we kept persevering. And eventually every strand of political and religious opinion on this island came together and produced agreement, generated mutual respect of one another and cemented the peace. I am very proud to have served in government alongside unionists. And in particular, I cherish the relationship I developed with both Ian Paisley and Peter Robinson. In many ways, these relationships symbolise my political philosophy that nothing is impossible and no problem is unsolvable or intractable. So Ireland needs the same sort of approach now. Irish people, both here and abroad, all working together in a common purpose to see our nation succeed, to see our nation united, and to see our nation rebuilt. I spoke recently about the need for a national conversation on the type of Republic Ireland needs to be as we approach the centenary of 1916. And I also appreciate that there are other important centenaries also of importance to the Unionist people of the North. All of these need to be dealt with with a huge degree of sensitivity. So I would see the President as facilitating a dialogue around the whole issue of what type of a republic Ireland should be. And I would see the presidency as being central in the unfinished business of the peace process, namely national reconciliation. 
And I too want to pay tribute to the outgoing President, Mary McAleese, and to her husband, Martin, for the huge work uh, that they have been involved in uh, during that time. People, of course, know of my past, and they also know of my deep commitment to peace and peace building. And I want to continue to reach out to those directly affected by the actions of Republicans in the course of the conflict. Republicans, including myself, have an obligation to help heal the wounds inflicted by our actions. And as many people know, I've just arrived back from the United States of America uh, yesterday morning. And I have to say, I was very humbled by the fact that leaving Aldergrove Airport, people were coming up to me. And indeed, there were at least three unionists among them, wishing me all the best in this election. I was even more humbled by the fact that I have been contacted by a number of people over the last 24 hours who have lost loved ones at the hands of the IRA, who have pledged their support to me in this election. So, as I embark on this campaign, I want to have a real engagement with the Irish people. I will seek to reach every parish in this land. I want to talk to people up and down this country. And I want the Irish people to join with me on this journey. I am committed to a secure future for the Irish language. And as my tenure as Education Minister will show, I have done probably more as Minister of Education for the Irish language than any other minister in the history of the Northern State. I am signed up to the LIFA initiative begun by the North Culture Minister, Carol Lee Cullen, who is here with us today, and I am committed to becoming fluent in Irish by 2015, which is our target. Yes, me too. <laughs> so my campaign is open to all. It will be broad-based and it will embody the great republican and democratic principles which underpin the Irish nation. I will be a people's president, a president for a new republic in a new time.